Hey folks, just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Inkscape and how to learn Inkscape. I'm probably going to ramble for a few minutes in this video and I apologize, but I realize there's a lot of videos out there. I have a lot of videos on how to do things with Inkscape and a lot of other people have them, but I haven't really seen one where anyone explains in layman terms what Inkscape is or how it works with Design Space. So uh, what I uh, thought I'd do is just give you the basics of what you need to be thinking about before you download it and try to use it. So first of all, only download Inkscape from Inkscape.org. Do not go to another website. Do not search for it because you could end up with a version that is bundled with malware or adware or something like that. It's very bad for your computer. If you have a Mac, uh, I think you have to have this thing called Xquartz. I'm not a Mac guy, so um, good luck with that. Uh, but you have to have that, and there are some, some, uh, some specific instructions on how to install it. And a lot of people get frustrated before they can even use it. Uh, so make sure you research that and read about it before you just try to download it and launch it because it may not work for you. So what is Inkscape? Uh, Inkscape is a vector editing program. And uh, a vector, uh, an SVG file, scalable vector graphic, is different from files like JPEGs or PNGs because uh, it can be adjusted in size and it can have layers. So without quality loss. A JPEG or a PNG is a flat file, so Design Space can only either cut the outline or it can print it. And those are the only two things you can really do to it without manipulating it somewhat in, in uh, uh, Design Space. But for the purposes of what we're talking about, that's the differences. And if you, you know, when do you need an SVG file? Well, you can use an SVG file for just about anything, um, but you don't always need it. If it's a simple image like a silhouette, uh, for example, Halloween is coming, and a, um, if you wanted a silhouette of a ghost uh, and you have one in uh, you know, a plain black and white image, you can import that into Design Space and cut it without having to create an SVG file. Now, I create a lot of SVG files for simple things like that just because I, I like to work with them. It makes it easier for me to share it with someone and not have to worry about them cleaning it up properly. And so, a uh, work, quick word on that, I do have another video on my channel called uh, How to Properly Clean Up Images. And uh, it teaches you about resolutions and file dimensions and things like that. It's very important information for importing flat files that you need to understand or you can run into some headaches with Design Space if you don't uh, understand those things. So, uh, how does it work? Well, a, I'm going to put some screenshots on the screen right now. And a, um, you know what you see on your screen is you know really just a you know, what it looks to you like a solid uh nice font simple font is actually something more like this for as what as far as what the cricket sees and it's called a path and a path is the path along which the blade or the pen moves along when you hit the go button and you press your load and your cricket button on the explorer and it moves the blade or the pen along that path and makes those lines. So a lot of people have learned that if you are writing with a pen, you must use a writing style font or it will just draw the outline. And that's because it's just, it's just going along the path. The pen takes the same path that a, the blade takes. You're just changing it from uh, cut to write so that it changes which carriage that it goes by. So uh, when you're using, you know, your ultimate goal is to create your designs and convert them to a path. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of uh, creating text in Inkscape and then just saving it as an SVG and trying to import it. And it won't work because you haven't created a path with it. You haven't converted your text to a path. If you s just create, type some text in Inkscape and save it and try to import it, um, you're, right now you're going to get a message that says that your image contains some invalid objects and it'll say probably a text object and ask if you want to import it anyway and then if you do that text won't show up because it's not a path okay can't stress that enough and so a lot of people make the uh, other mistake of opening a JPEG file and saving it as a an SVG and then when they import it in Inkscape right now, it's going to tell you that it contains an invalid object and it's going to say it's an image object because at that point you've created an SVG file, but in that SVG file is just a JPEG image. It's not a, a path. So the, the design space has to have a path, okay? And, there, and there's other object types that it, that it will uh, warn you about uh, as well. So. Uh, how do you get started? Well, you want to do basic things. Uh, when you first get Inkscape loaded up and start working with it, 
you know, I would challenge if someone's brand new to it, create a circle or a square, convert it to a path, and then save it as a plain SVG. You always save as a plain SVG, and then import it into Design Space and see if it comes in with no errors and looks as you would expect it. And if it does, then let's move on to something a little more complicated. Type some text, convert it to a path, and then move on to the, you know, save it as a plain SVG, uh, import it into Design Space, and see if it comes in as expected. So uh, you, you want to step up from very basic things and, uh, and, and do it that way. I see too many people try to, uh, you know, just watch videos and apply those to different images that have nothing to do with the video they watch. And one of the important things for you to understand is that Inkscape is not something that you can learn as a here's your one, two, three steps that you know this is how you do this because there are a lot of variables involved. There's image qualities involved. You have to understand what the node editor does, what the paths are, the layers, the objects, you know, all of those things. Um, combine, union, separate, uh, you know, you really need to understand those things. And um, the neat thing about it is if you've been using Design Space or other design programs for die cutters like this, you really already understand a lot of the con concepts. You just don't know it yet uh, because you're already working with layers, weld, and slice, and all these things. And a lot of those commands do the same functions in Inkscape that they do in Design Space or other programs. So if you keep that mindset and just say, okay, well, I have these objects here and I need to weld them. What's the command for weld in Inkscape? Oh, it's union. So it's the same thing, same principle. And you'll pick up these things and learn them very quickly, uh, much quicker than you think you will because you, you, know, you really already know a lot of these things. So uh, the other thing is when you follow the videos, whether they're my videos or Crafts by Two or anyone else, try to use the same images as in the videos because if you try to apply what the steps are in the videos to a different image type, they may not match one to one. There's too much to learn about how it works before you can do your own images. So I would encourage you to go to Google Images and download the same images that I use in my videos or anyone else uses and follow the steps you know, to the T on what you do with them. Uh, you know, Don't hesitate to pause the video and back it up and watch pieces of it and listen very closely. I know on my videos, sometimes I might forget to say something in the video. I, I try to do it um, you know, very thoroughly, but every now and then I may have to put an annotation on the screen that says, hey, I forgot to say to do this step or something like that. So watch the video, read the annotations on the screen closely, and use the same images to do the same steps and learn. You have to learn what it is and how it works in order to use it effectively, in my opinion. And once you do that, you get you can get very good with it because when you buy files from, uh, say, Etsy or something like that, if you buy something and it won't import into Design Space, a lot of people have this problem. And they'll send me their SVG files, and when I look at it, there'll be something like one little object is not converted to a path. And I bring it in Inkscape, convert it, save it very quickly, and everything's fine after that. And when you get those skill sets, you can do those things very quickly. It becomes you know, very easy to do. And I would encourage everyone to learn those things thoroughly and play around with them. Test it. You don't have to even cut material to prove that you know how to do it properly because if it comes into design space properly, then you've created your SVG properly in most, in most cases. So don't be afraid to sit down and play you know i would not encourage anyone to download it thinking they're going to make a design to give someone for a birthday gift this weekend because it's pressure and you don't need pressure when you're trying to learn something you're unfamiliar with that's my opinion and you know that's my advice to you so um hopefully that's been helpful to you uh to get you started um, I know a lot of people, I've seen several posts, and I've said it many times, that I, it really humbles me and makes me feel good when someone says that they learned this because of my videos or something I taught them. And, uh, you know, a lot of people out there like to inspire creativity. 
and I like to inspire people to learn new things, and w regardless of what it is. And if I've inspired someone to learn something, and you post it out there and let me know about it, it just gives me more encouragement to do more of these types of videos and, and teach more things. Uh, and I don't know it all, but I, you know, have the capacity to probably learn and do different things. Or, you know, a lot of times people will ask me about something and I never thought about that situation, so I can do a video on it, and it helps everyone learn. So again, um, I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate all your projects that you post and put out there, and and, and uh, I just love to inspire people to learn, and uh, hopefully this video has been helpful to you as well. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel, and after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.